and welcome. This week we're going to be talking about Atwood's Machine. Now the objectives for the Atwood's Machine Lab. We're going to use Atwood's Machine to measure the relationship between force and acceleration, and then you're going to graph this relationship. Now if you know Newton's second law, you may have a spoiler alert, but that's alright. We're going to do this anyway, because that's... So this is Atwood's Machine. It may look like a pulley, but looks can be deceiving. And what you're going to do, it has two masses hanging on it. This is what makes a difference. You have one mass here, one mass here. If mass 1 is greater than mass 2, this mass is going to drop. This mass is going to go up. It's going to cause them to accelerate, and they're going to accelerate at the same rate. Uh, here I just put in the negative sign because one's going down, one's going up. But you can draw your diagram however you want. So if we look at this, this is a more in-depth look. Again, mass 1 is going to go down. We'll call this a, by mass 1 I meant mass 2, and this is mass 1. It's going to go up, and you can see that negative a1 equals a2. Now, look at your handout, and it'll actually go through this. But the important thing to note is that the mass difference between these accelerates. So the mass difference, mass difference and gravity, can't forget gravity, causes the acceleration, causes your acceleration. And you can think about this, if these two are balanced, it's not going anywhere, but if this is really heavy, it's going to fall. So when you're working with Atwood's machine, it's very important to mass everything. Mass everything all the time and at each run. So every time you move a mass, you need to mass the mass of each hanger. Keep in mind that each hanger has a mass of 5 grams, and you should always have at least 100 grams additional on the hanger. Now it's also important to know that with Atwood's machine you are looking at very small accelerations. So at the start we'll have 45 additional grams on one hanger. Keep in mind this is the heavy one, it's the one going to, well, it's going to fall because gravity's acting on it. Now, as you go from time to time, you will take five grams from one hanger, notice the mass is stamped on it, but we can't really trust them, and we will move it over here. Now the difference has changed by 10 grams. Next time you will move another 10 gram over, and we'll put the five gram back. So if we're to look at this, instead of 45 grams, we now have an additional 10 grams on this side, and then 35 grams on this side. So every time you are moving mass over from here to here, when 5 grams goes from this side to this side, your mass difference changes by 10 grams. So now let's show you what this looks like in action. We have the lighter mass. Keep in mind, this is the lighter mass. It is mounted on the pulley, and let's watch this. Science in progress, going up, there's the pulley. You will, well, it probably shouldn't be swinging that much, so you'll do better. And it goes, and it goes, and it goes. Something that you have to be careful, please make sure that your masses do not collide. So there is no collision between masses. In addition, you are going to be running each of these four times at each mass difference, at each mass difference. So 45, 35, 25, 15, and 5, corresponding to moving 5 grams from the more massive hanger to the less massive hanger. So now let's look at what mass is accelerating. Newton's second law says a force causes a mass to accelerate. The force is the weight difference between the two hangers. So if we look at this, the mass is accelerating, that hanger is moving, this hanger is accelerating, and the pulley is accelerating. Now we're going to get into rotational motion a little bit, but what you need to know is this point out here moves really fast, this point here doesn't move very much at all, and then you've got these little spokes. So your mass is all kind of put at different spots. So if we were to look at this, a mass on the outside goes really fast, a mass on the inside doesn't go as fast, linearly, linear distance. This falls, a point on the rim travels a big linear distance, a point in the middle travels a 
little distance. And right now we're going to say that your total mass is equal to mass hanger 1. That should be an H. Mass of hanger 1 plus mass of hanger 2 plus 0 0.6, 0 0.6 times the mass of the pulley. And this is the total mass that's being accelerated. Again, all of hanger 1 is moving, all of hanger 2 is moving, and 0.6 the mass of the pulley. The 0.6 accounts for very fast here, not as fast here. And then you've got more mass because of these spoke, more masses on the outside because you have these spokes. So when you are collecting your data, we are going to be using graphical analysis. So to start off, note, very important, this is a velocity graph, velocity time graph, which means the slope is acceleration. So to start this, before you drop it, you will press this green collect button, you will wait a second, and then the data will come. So we'll hit it, it'll say waiting for data, drop the hanger, do, 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 do. Oh, look, data, 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 and it stops. Notice, this little part right here is where it hits the ground. We don't want that in our data, so what we're going to do is we are going to select our data points that we want, and then we notice linear fit, and we chose linear fit. Now we want to show your uncertainty because you need the uncertainty. So just a quick recap. Select the points of a nice flat line, or at least looks flat. Then linear fit because you want a linear acceleration. And make sure that you record uncertainty and slope. And you'll do this four times. So let's talk about a couple procedural notes always have at least 100 grams on the hanger. For trial two, when you're collecting more points, this goes to 150 grams on each hanger. Second, in addition to the minimum that you have on each hanger, you have 45 extra grams on the system that's being accelerated. Also, your mass hanger has a mass of five grams. Your hangers are also being accelerated, and then make sure to convert all these masses into kilograms. And when I say all these masses, also remember that you are massing everything. In physics, we don't really take other people's word for it. Why do that when you can find it out for yourself? Right. Which brings us to our last thing. You've got all this great data, what do you do with it? We make a graph, good. So if we're graphing, if we say, well, we know that Newton's second law, F equals mass times acceleration. All right. Huh. So let's compare this to Y equals MX plus B. You will get a graph. Hopefully it looks somewhat like a straight line when you graph your average quantities. Hmm. So what should Y be? Well, Y matches up with force. And Newton's X matches up with acceleration which means that your slope that you are talking about finding matches up with huh, mass. So m in this lab equals m total. Your slope is your mass total. Now keep in mind that your slope will have some uncertainty. It has some plus or minus value. And hopefully this range for this is equal to your mass total. So keeping this in mind, you will have two graphs, two graphs, one for the 100 gram, and then plus one for the 150 gram. So two graphs. Now there are a couple ways you can look at the error in this lab. First off, your general comparison, you are comparing M from your graph the mass from the graph to m total, which you calculate. And hopefully, like we've done in all the other labs, you'll have these error bars on here. Error bars here are from um, your graph, the actual readout. Error on this one is going to be from 
your mass difference, all right? You will mass everything, and you'll get a little difference, except the pulley. The pulley, you'll use 0 0.6 times 5.5 grams, which is what the pulley mass at. So your overall slope uncertainty, this is using m graph, plus or minus. And then when you're looking at your propagation of uncertainty, every single measurement you took for a, so you had a, plus or minus some number, you have f, plus or minus, and you know that m equals force over acceleration. Huh, so you're multiplying and dividing. That means you've got a percent here, a percent here, and you will add percents, just like normal. Uh, keep in mind that as you are looking at this, you can find a typical percent error that your force is off and a typical percent error that your acceleration is off. Max value, average value, however you choose to do it, um, we can talk about it, but you, know, you can figure out a way to do this. So one method, look at the slope, and compare your slopes, other method, propagation, looking at the error in your acceleration values and your force values. And this brings us to our wrap up. Couple of key notes, record your accelerations and your uncertainties, and also mass everything before each run. And then you have two runs, one with 100 grams, one with 150. Also notice that it is the mass, well, the weight difference in each hanger that causes the acceleration. So I hope this is helpful, and I will see you in lab.